It's Arthur returning. Guinevere rose from her seat. Immediately, all of the women dropped their spindles and clustered around her. How do you know? Guinevere laughed. A messenger brought me the news last night, she said. Do you think I am dealing in sorcery at my age? She looked around her at the excited girls. To Morgoth, it seemed that all of Guinevere's ladies were but little girls. Fourteen, fifteen. Whom we never used to leave off spinning. And now the queen said indulgently, Shall we go watch him from the heights? Chattering, giggling, gathering in groups of two and three, they ran off, leaving the drop spindles where they had fallen. Good naturedly, Guinevere called one of the serving women to put the room to rights, and at Morgoth's side falls at a more dignified pace to the brow of the hill where they could see the wide road leading up to Camelot. Look, there's the king! And Sir Mordred riding at his side. And there's the Lord Lancelot. Oh, look! He has a bandage around his head and his arms in a sling. Let me see, said Guinevere and pushed them aside while the girls stared. Morgoth could make out Woody and riding at Arthur's side. He appeared unwounded and she drew a sigh of relief. She could see Cormac among the men, too. He had ridden to war with all the men, and he too seemed unhurt. Gareth was easy to find among them. He was the tallest man in Arthur's company. His fair hair blazed like a halo. Gawain, too, at Arthur's back as always, was upright in his saddle, but as they came nearer, she could see a great bruise on his face darkening his eyes, and his mouth was swollen as though he'd had a tooth or two knocked out. Look, Sir Mordred is so handsome, one of the little girls said. I've heard the queen say that she looks exactly like Lancelot did when Lancelot was young. Then she giggled and dug her neighbors in the ribs. They clung together, whispering, and were lost watch, sighing. They seemed so young, all of them, so pretty, with their hair silky soft and bound in plaits and curls, brown or red or golden, their cheeks soft as petals and smooth as a baby's. Their waist so slim, their hands so smooth and white. She felt suddenly wild with jealousy. Once she had been more beautiful than any of them. Now they were nudging one another, whispering about this night and that. Look how the Saxon knights are all bearded. Why do they want to look shaggy like dogs? My mother, says one of the maidens said impudently. She was the daughter of one of the Saxon noblemen. Her name was something barbarian which Morgoth could hardly pronounce, Alfred or something of that sort. That to kiss a man without a beard is like kissing another maiden, or your baby brother. Yet Sir Mordred shaves his face clean, and there is nothing maidenly about him, said one of the girls. She turned laughing to Ninian standing among the women. Is there, Lady Ninian? Ninian said with a soft laugh, all these bearded men seem old to me. When I was a little girl, only my father and the oldest druids ever went bearded. But even Bishop Patricius now wears his beard, said one of the girls. I heard him say that in heathen times, men deformed their faces by cutting their beards, and men should wear their beards as God made them. Maybe the Saxons think it's so. It's but a new fashion, said Morgoth. They come and they go. When I was young, Christian and pagan alike shaved their faces clean. Now the fashion simply changed. I think not it is do anything with holiness either way. I doubt not that one day Gwydion will wear a beard. Do you think less of him, Ninian? The younger woman laughed. No, cousin, he is the same, bearded or shaven. Look, there rides King Kyrdig and others. Are they all to be guested here at Camelot? Madam, shall I go and tell the stewards? Please do, my dear, Guinevere said. Ninian moved towards the hall. The girls were shoving one another to get a better view. Guinevere said, Come, come, all of you, back to your spinning. It's unseemly to stare at young men this way. Have none of you anything better to do than talk so immodestly about the men? All of you now, be off with you. You'll see them this night in the great hall. There's to be feasting, which means work for all of you. They looked sulky, but they went obediently back to the hall. Guinevere sighed. She shook her head as she walked back at Morgoth's sign. In heaven's name, was there ever such a lot of unruly girls? 
and somehow I must keep them all chaste and under my guidance. It seems they spend all their time gossiping and giggling instead of minding their spinning. I'm ashamed that my court should be filled with so empty-headed and immodest little hussies like this. Oh, come, my dear, said Morgoth lazily. Surely you too were fifteen once. Surely you are not such a model maiden as all that. Did you never steal a look at a handsome young man and think and gossip about what it would be like to kiss him, bearded or shaven? 